Okay, so we're going to start off with kind of just looking at what is visualization as it applies to industrial automation. Um, just kind of a general overview of, of different uh, forms of vis visualization. Um, so really it kind of boils down to, you know, um, these type of things. So panel meters, of course, as a form of visualization, it's been around for a long time. Simple displays that might show um, a number, you know, a level, temperature, um, operator interfaces, which is kind of what we were, you know, really going to be focused on here in this class, which would be kind of your your panel mount touchscreen uh, operator interfaces, and then also HMIs, um, which would typically run on a on a Windows computer or server um, and run higher level Windows based software. So looking at panel meters first, I mean, uh, these are, again, very straightforward, very simple, relatively low cost. Um, typically, they're going to only show one data point, possibly more than one, depending on the panel meter. Um, usually, these are going to be wired directly to a transmitter, to a, like a 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter, or to perhaps an, a PLC analog output module. So a PLC could be feeding a 4 to 20 milliamp signal out to a panel meter. Um, they're going to have pretty limited uh, operator interface options, right? Usually it's going to be just like you kind of see in the picture here, just kind of some numbers on the screen. Possibly you'll see sometimes they'll have a little um, little bar graph underneath perhaps to kind of show the operator, you know, what percentage, you know, is the value at um, of the overall span. Uh, and some of these guys do offer alarm contacts and potentially alarm triggers since they are digital you know, you, you can potentially program um, alarm set points into them and have like a dry contact, you know, closure to, to sound a horn or, or even wire back into a PLC that there's been an alarm condition. So kind of stepping up the, in the game there a little bit would be operator interface terminals or OITs. Um, these these have been around for quite some time. Touch screens, uh, typically you know color, but they are monochrome out there as well. Uh, they come in various sizes, anywhere from like four inch screens all the way up to 19 inch, and possibly even a little bit larger uh, in some brands. Um, they are um, you know some some offer keypads on there, so you can kind of see the, the image in the middle. That there's some keypad um, buttons that you can actually program those keypads to do certain things. A lot of times they are just touch screens for the operators just to kind of use their finger and touch. Um, they are rugged. They're designed for the plant floor. So, you know, they are designed for the, the temperature um, and the dirt and grime that might come from, uh, from the plant floor. Um, so the biggest advantage of the, of the, uh, of the operator face was the ability to kind of replace push buttons and panel meters like we just saw in that last screen, right? So if you had a giant console or a big panel, you could have a lot of uh, displays on them, a lot of uh, panel meters on, on those consoles. And uh, you could have a lot of push buttons and maybe even pilot lights and stuff like that on the console. So every one of those devices that sits there, a push button, pilot light, or a panel meter would require some level of wiring to it back to some something right either relay logic or even to a plc so the whole idea of the of the operator interface terminal is that you can replace all of those you know kind of operator interfaces uh be it push buttons pilot lights this uh panel meters with this one programmable um interface so now you can customize your screens you can um can build multiple panels, you know, multiple screens to navigate between. Um, you could put push buttons and lights and numbers on the screen, and you can animate all those properties. And the advantage of it is, of course, if you got to make changes, you can easily reprogram your panel and drop the new program in there, and um, away you go. To do that in the older way, if you had, you know, hardwired push buttons, pilot lights, and panel meters, if you had to make changes or add push buttons or change wiring schemes or control schemes, then you're, you know, potentially popping holes in the, in the, in the metal panel. Um, you're potentially having to rewire things. Um, so that just takes more time. 
the moral waiver to uh, to do that. So there's an advantage to the to the touch screens. Um, some of the other uh, features that the, the operator interfaces bring you is you, know, you can communicate to one or more PLCs. Most of these guys will all have Ethernet ports on them and allow you to communicate to uh, to various PLCs on the plant floor. So you can pull data from multiple devices and display it on 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 this one unit. Um, you can do trend charts. You can log data. Uh, you can also create alarm tables, so you, so you can have um, alarm indications pop up on these screens um, based on you know conditions that you you would of course pre-program. Uh, and then moving up one more tier uh, would be HMI software. So so again, these will be running on Windows computers, such as a Windows 10 or even a, a server-based machine. Um, they could be standalone or server-based with remote clients. So what we mean by that is standalone would be that's just a, a, a single computer, very much like the touchscreen we just saw a minute ago, single computer that just talks to one or more PLCs and displays the numbers and the, you know, the values on the screen. Or you could have a, a server that is talking to multiple PLCs and then have a bunch of clients tied to that one server. So now you've distributed your HMI throughout your entire facility from this one server. Um, they can be virtualized, and we'll talk about, a little bit about that here later in this video, as well as thin clients, and we'll show that as well. And then, of course, with the computer, you have the ability to bring in other um, automation software into that application. So you can bring in um, historians, you can bring in other dashboarding tools, you can bring in some what's known as MES or manufacturing execution system software. So that kind of keeps, you know, perhaps some scheduling and some tracking um, software for your, for your production. And even to, as a you know, big trend today is analytics and the ability to kind of look at these, at, at this data that you've been collecting and maybe begin to make some decisions um, before problems occur versus um, knowing about them after they occur. So in the operator interface application, this would be a, a very simple architecture that you would see. So you've got a control logics um, system here, and then you have an Ethernet switch um, as well. And you got some other devices out here, such as uh, remote I.O. and drives and some other um, miscellaneous industrial control equipment that be coming into this uh, Ethernet switch. And then tied off the switch as well is a panel view operating interface. So of course this would be a, this is an example of an Allen Bradley architecture and panel view is the, is the brand of operating interface for Allen Bradley. So the point of this graphic is just to show you that the ease of which this can kind of connect. So again, Ethernet is the kind of become the, the backbone and the network of choice for all these devices. So we, we bring everything back together uh, on the ethernet and back to the controller. And then the uh, panel view operator interface is also tied to the ethernet. And the way how this works is the panel view is actually gonna be reading all the tags out of the control logics. So um, in the program you will create, you would have uh, all your tag database you know, in your controller. And these tags will be you know, all these remote devices we also show in here, such as the remote IO and the drive. And the panel view would not be talking to the remote IO directly or the drive directly, it would be talking to the controller. So it would be mapped to the tags in the controller, uh, read those tags out of the controller, and then of course, display them and animate them um, on the screens you develop. So we move to the HMI application. Um, this was a sample architecture I was able to find of just a standalone or local HMI. So very similar architecture, just drawn a little bit differently than that last slide. Um, but we would have a application server kind of sitting right there, which is also kind of indicated as A. And then you have all your PLCs down here on your network. All right, so various amount of PLCs and different types, and they could be different manufacturers even too, so they don't have to all be one brand. Um, so if you have a mix on the plant floor, they can all talk to that one HMI package. Um, there's an ethernet switch again, sitting uh, right here in, in the middle. Um, and this is just what's being identified as a optional engineering workstation. So it's just another laptop that you know you maybe would have as your, your programming laptop that you can just put onto the network and connect to, 
these remote PLCs and make programming changes. So in this example, it's pretty straightforward. You've got a computer, again, sitting on the network. That computer is running the HMI software. The HMI software is, is basically going to be communicating to each of those PLCs directly over the Ethernet network and reading the tags out of the controllers. And then again, displaying them um, inside this software. So this is an example of the distributed ar uh, application or distributed architecture for HMI. So in this case, you've got um, the same architecture uh, we had a minute ago, but with now we have the addition of a bunch of client computers on that network as well. And you can also split your HMI servers up into two. So you can actually have redundant servers if you want. Um, so that, so if one computer were to fail, the other computer would, would pick it up and, and, and be the server. Um, you can also kind of distribute some of your other things into other servers. So your alarm server or your historian server could be a whole separate server as well. You don't have to be, but the, you can definitely split those into separate servers depending on the size of your application. And then off here on the right, we have a bunch of client uh, devices or HMI clients. So these clients in this in this application would actually be thick clients, meaning they would be actual Windows computers. So um, you would have Windows computers spread throughout the facility. They're tied on the network back to the server. And the server is simply sending the screen data out to these clients. So the clients aren't necessarily running the HMI software um, independently, they're going to be running what's called a viewer node, and it will be dependent upon the server to send the information to these clients. The advantage of that is you can have one application sitting on the server, and then these remote clients are just going to look back to the server, as opposed to having 10 or 15 separate applications to try to maintain uh, in your facility. So that's the real advantage of this architecture is you got one one HMI application that you create, you deploy it on a server, and then it gets shared throughout the um, throughout all the viewer nodes. So the last piece I want to leave on is just kind of some of the least recent trends uh, that we see happening in industry and around virtualization. So virtualization is, um, and you've been playing with virtualization a little bit with the with the cloud-based labs we've been doing. Those have been virtual machines that are just running in the cloud. Um, so it allows uh, one computer to basically do the job of multiple computers by sharing the resources of a single platform across multiple environments. So what that means is uh, the, the picture on the left is you've got your traditional computer operating system and you've got, say, one application running on that system. The version on the right where we put the virtualization layer in there is now we can run multiple virtual machines on this one computer. So each VM um, is a completely independent virtual computer running on, on one set of hardware. So what that actually would look like is kind of is well done in this little animation. So this is an example perhaps of a very large HMI application. You've got multiple servers here. You've got primary HMI, secondary HMI server, You've got domain controllers, you've got some historian and vantage point and batch server. So each one of those um, gray boxes up top would be a, a completely separate server. Each one of those servers would require um, Windows licensing, would require patching, would require some level of IT support to keep those servers running. And then at the bottom of the, of the network, you'll see a bunch of engineering workstations and operator workstations. So those are thick clients again, meaning those would be computers that are running um, either as viewer nodes or if they're engineering workstations, they're actually, you know, computers that would be, you know, could develop uh, such as your Studio 5000 software to, to do uh, maintenance and development with. So that's a lot of hardware to try to maintain, right? You've got at least eight servers up top. You've got you know, eight licenses, eight computers to keep patched. That's a lot of work for, for one application. So the idea of virtualization is we can take each one of those servers and virtualize them and actually run them off of one server. Um, 
so the example here is everything in the blue box now up top are they're all individual virtual machines or vms and they will all be placed on that one server up there in the upper corner and run off that one server so um, the natural thing to think at that point is well that's great but at the same time you know that's i kind of all my eggs in one basket kind of thing what happens if that server fails well yes everything goes down so the requirement for perhaps a fault tolerant server or creating servers that are capable of you know uh, redundant servers would be uh, very important in this type of architecture but the advantage for you is if that server were to fail you simply provision a new server and place the vms on them and spin up the vms and you're back off and running again um, so it's very easy and quick to replace um, and again when we talk about anything industrial automation and manufacturing the name of the game is uptime right so if you had eight servers and you had to replace all eight servers that could be many many hours if not a day or two of labor to get everything back to the way it was virtualized server it's simply the virtual machines already created it's saved as a virtual machine you just copy it onto the new server and you start her up and there's no patching there's no licensing it's all ready to go so that's the biggest advantage and in this last example here the, the next trend we see is thin clients and thin clients is the ability to remove at the bottom down there the operator workstations we were calling those thick clients earlier so each one of those thick clients would have an operating system on them like windows 10 and software installed on them like uh, hmi software and licensing for all that so if we go the thick client route then that's a lot of work and a lot of expense so the trend now is thin clients and thin clients have zero operating system on them they are very inexpensive hardware boxes and the thin client simply points back to the server and everything is served to it from the server so from an automation standpoint or from an industrial manufacturing standpoint that is a really nice um, feature because now if your viewer node were to fail and it's a thin client you take the thin client hardware out you replace it with a new box and there's nothing to do there's no ip address to set there's no operating systems to install the thin client will point right back to the server and get all of its information and all of the session information from the server and send it right back down to the thin client so again in the name of the game of uptime and quick you know quickness to repair um you know this is something that anybody can really do without any necessarily uh it skills are involved um any technician can can take a box out the you know a new thing client out the box stick it in hook up the power wire to it hook up the network wire to it and restart the thin client and then you're back up and running again that quick okay so that's it for just a, a general overview of, of virtualization how we're kind of seeing it used um, today um, we'll continue on with some other videos that will actually show the, the programming aspects of the of the panel view uh, especially like the one we have in the lab